Hey everyone, welcome back to Cybersecure TV. So last week we talked about the XPath injection and in that we also discussed what is the XML document, how, how are the XML data store works, uh, how, how the tags are defined and how you can query, right? And then we of course saw the demo of the injection attack. Uh, today I'm gonna uh, talk to you about like, you know, a bit more depth. Uh, so we're gonna talk about the, what are the entities uh, within the XML document, why is it used, how it is used, and then as an attacker or as, as a pen tester, how you can leverage it and, and exploit the XSE injection, or it is called XML external entity attack. So please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Uh, so first off, what is entities? So it's a synonym of the constant. Uh, so as you can like, you must have seen in various applications, the developers define a constant and then throughout the application, whenever they have to refer to it, like, you know, the value of the constant, they can easily refer. So constant could be as simple as, let's say there's a variable, uh, the name, name of the variable is A and the value is, this is a constant variable. So whenever throughout the application, uh, a developer refers to that A, the application actually uh, replaces with the uh, string that's defining the constant. And don't worry if this is not uh, like, you know, straightforward, we'll, we'll see an example and, and it will make it more clear. So here is the, like, you know, how you define constant or an entity in the XML. So you have like an entity verb, then you have like name of the variable, you can consider this as name, and this is the value of it. So whenever a developer uh, or application uses this test, and of course you have to make a reference to it and I'll see how I'll show you how to make a reference but yeah whenever you use this test uh, variable anywhere in the application it will be replaced by this string so it sounds simple right like whenever of course you don't want to uh, write the same string again and again like thousand times if you have to use it so rather it defi let's define as a constant and use it now one thing you have seen uh, this is i have marked it in red which says user defined what does it mean it's an attacker control that's a synonym so whenever something is user defined that means a user we assume that's an attacker and attacker can control the value of it and and don't worry we'll see the demo it will make make much more clear now the here the variable we have purely used like you know to define the string which is which says like this string will display However, you can also use it for uh, referencing to the remote files. So as an attacker, I have a server and uh, on my server, I host some malicious file. So I can also refer to that uh, uh, like a you know, malicious file here. I can also uh, refer to the internal file. So we'll, we'll see that example as well later in the video. Now let's see the definition from the OWASP. So it says an XML external entity attack is a type of attack against an application that parses XML input, right? So we, we talked in the previous video, what is XML input and how a user control input can lead to a XPath injection. This attack occurs when XML input containing a reference to an external entity, which is like a remote file, is processed by a weakly configured XML parser. This attack may lead to a disclosure of confidential data of course, if I if I can refer to any internal file and then like, you know, it gives me in the response all the file content, that's a disclosure of the data. Denial of service, I'll show you I'll in the demo how you can conduct the denial of service. Uh, server side request forgery, uh, we have seen that in the previous video, uh, not the previous video, but the uh, pr probably a few months ago. I have linked that in the description. You can also do a port scanning. Uh, again, we have seen that earlier as well. From the perspective of the machine where the parser is located and other system impacts, right? So that, that just so many, that's a huge impact and that's the reason uh, it's part of the OS top 10. So it, it is worth noting that we need to understand uh, this very, very, uh, like, you know, deeply to make sure our basics are clear. Okay, uh, that being said, uh, let's, see a, let's see an example, right? Oops, yeah, so let's see an example. Uh, here is the XML version. Uh, here is the doc type. This is a standard syntax. Uh, and let's say there is an entity called name, and it's a cybersecurity TV. Now, whenever I'm I'm developing an application and I need to refer to this entire string, so rather than this, I'll just put a like this is my channel. There's a title of the HTML page, cool cybersecurity training, and then uh, here this is the ampersand sign. This is how I'm gonna refer to this variable. And instead of name, I'll, I'll have cybersecurity TV uh, displayed here by in the HTML page, right? So that's that sounds pretty simple. And this is a, a good example or valid example, valid 
valid use case that the uh, any any developer can have now let's see the bad example so what i did was simply uh, instead of like you know uh, just a string i changed it to system and then referring to some internal file and whenever uh, as a user if i display this then uh, instead of like you know uh, actual string i'm going to i'm going to be able to see the content of this random file so this is the impact of it and and i'll we'll see we'll see the demo of how this is actually uh, like you know happens in the real world now what are the different payloads you can use uh, the first one is for remote code execution you can use like expect id and uh, now for this one it has to be enabled in the linux machine and then it's pretty much uh, you can have rc remote code execution next you can also refer to an internal file like i said uh, this is like you know any password uh, of, of the users then you can also uh, refer to uh, windows machine windows for if the win, uh, remote server is windows then you can also uh, reach out to the attacker uh, system and like you know uh, import that con content in the uh, it's again the remote uh, file execute remote code execution sort of vulnerability right so these are the different payloads uh, we can have uh, with this vulnerability so uh, what we're gonna do today is i'm gonna show you the demo multiple demos one will we'll see how you can conduct the denial of service attack i'll also uh, show you how we can do the actual actual ex external external like you know entity parsing like how you can define the tag how you can define the entity and then uh, with the malicious payload how do we exploit it all right so let's hop on to our vm uh, so last time we uh, we saw the XPath injection. Um, this time I'm gonna uh, give you this XML external entity processing. Uh, here uh, it's simple. Simply says an XSC attack occurs when XML input containing a reference to an entity is processed by weakly configured XML parser. Right. So the same definition which we saw from OWASP. The following form will take an XML value and converts into an object. Please enter your name below inside the predefined XML tags. So if I say my name, let's say test, it's gonna say hello test, right? So how, like what could wrong with this? So first let's see uh, uh, a possibility of the denial of service, how, how I can conduct that denial of service. And and uh, if you if you remember as part of the OAS top 10 series, uh, uh, like one of the video that we did like uh, for XSE uh, uh, vulnerability, I actually explained you how like this is one of the possibilities. So now let's see that how you can actually conduct the denial of service attack using uh, this vulnerability. So I have a payload predefined. So let me show you directly there. I'll, I'll walk you through the payload. I just wanted to uh, make it quicker. Uh, so here, uh, this is something we have already seen. So uh, you define the doc type and then you define start define the entity. So I have first entity defined as XSE zero and the string it says DOS right and then I have another entity defined which is XSC1 which is referring to XSC0 then I have another entity which is uh, XSC2 uh, okay I think I missed it here let me fix it XSC2 and it's referring to XSC1 which is an indeed referring to XSC0 which is a string again going to three and so you can of course uh, have this like you know thousand million times and and at the last what i'm doing is uh, in the name let's remove this test and we are just trying to display and uh, referring to this variable so now it's gonna work reverse so it's gonna say oh let me go to xsc2 it's gonna go back uh, the value of xsc2 is xsc1 so it's gonna go here it goes to the xsc0 and then finally displays the content so as an attacker you can repeat these things for 100 million times and then of course eventually it's gonna break the parser and you have like you know denial of service attack so if i copy this and let's paste it here and as you can see the string appears and and here i have like you know put the very small string like i can have maybe thousand characters here and just imagine and if you repeat the thousand characters ten thousand times how big of a string it could occur and then like you know it can eventually call, call, uh, cause the denial of service right so that's uh, that's one of the way uh, you can 
uh, have the uh, this vulnerability exploited or or the impact of the system. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna solve this one uh, because this is very similar. Uh, I'll probably I think this is something that you should do it. Uh, I have already explained it uh, just now and also explained in one of my OAS top 10 playlist. So this is uh, something I'll, I'll leave it to you guys for exercise. Now let's actually see the uh, processing like you know external entity or, or uh, access injection vulnerability. So for that I'm gonna head into this one which says um, the XSE example processes and parses the entire request sent by the print greeting button. So if I click here, it says, hello, thank you for using DBWS. So let's capture this request in Burp uh, to make it more clear on what are we doing. So I'm going to head on to the Burp, intercept on, say print greeting. Okay. So here you can see user value, uh, DVWS value and user value, right? So let's uh, send this to the repeater. And first off, what we need to do is our goal is to fetch the internal password file. And how can I do that? So of course, I'm going to define a doc type. I'll define my entity and I'm going to refer to that entity here. So for that, we're going to use this payload. I'll, I'll explain you. So, uh, doc type foo entity XSE system. So this is one of the payload which I uh, like, you know, which we saw during the presentation. And then uh, closing tag, and and this is closing, and then this is normal uh, a value of the page request, right? And what I need to do here is I just need to refer to ampersand XXE semicolon. And if I do that, so uh, instead of uh, like, you know, uh, actual greeting message, it's going to print uh, the f content of this file. So if I send this request, as you can see here, and I can actually uh, show you this here. Right. So now you can see the entire password file of this uh, remote like uh, VM. So this is uh, one of the things uh, you can do. Now, treat like you know, treat XSE as one of your um, uh, injection vulnerability. So any injection, be it X, SQL injection or anything, there is all sort of possibility. You can also do a cross-site scripting. How do you do that? So let me show you here. Uh, of course, we can do it in any way. Uh, so as simple as, I'm I'm gonna say script alert one two and script right uh, let me capture this request and see how this works so we can define or we can change our payload if this doesn't work uh, so let's see alert one two okay so I don't think so our string has been posted yeah so I think it's uh, it's sanitizing somewhere uh, as we have as I uh, like you know uh, we have done before we're gonna encode it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna script alert one two and I'm gonna encode as the HTML right then copy this let's uh, I'm gonna put test and then my payload let's send here does it stands out here I don't think so okay it says error converting xml value to an object so i think i'm missing something let's see here uh script alert one two do i need to put a semicolon here i don't know let's encode again uh no yeah okay let's try this Okay, and let's try this here to see the actual error or actually just put it here. Oh, there you go. I'm not sure why it wasn't showing up in the burp, but let's uh, try that. But as you can see, this is simple, like, you know, as simple as any injection vulnerability um, 
that you could see so instead of like just injecting our script tag we are actually injecting the uh, using the xml parcel to do some job for us and and give us the content of the internal system or maybe referring to the and and here uh, as you can see instead of this i can also put a like you know reference to some external uh, website like https www attacker dot com and then malicious script dot js or txt or whatever it is right and then uh, as soon as i call this variable uh, the attack is gonna work and we have seen increasingly uh, uh, application uh, one, uh, affecting to this vulnerability and that's why this has uh, been part of now OWASP top 10 at least in the latest version uh, so uh, make sure you uh, like you know do practice on this and, and make sure you understand this uh, why this vulnerability and 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 this will also actually help you uh, because this is very common questions being asked in ma many interviews as well so uh, do let me know if you have any questions please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already and uh, subscribe to my channel of course leave us a comment uh, what other vulnerabilities that uh, like you know you would like me to cover or anything specific any any, any interesting uh, vulnerability that you have found or, or any other payloads that you know uh, we can try on this xse uh, so please share with our community and that's all for now and i'll see you guys next week bye